dudes when I first rebooted my channel I did not think anyone would watch any of my videos so I just kind of lazily threw some stuff up so I'm going to do this video over again but in a much improved form this video is aimed at total cheat engine noobs you don't have to have any special know-how you're just following steps the problem with Dark Souls 3 is there are so many cool spells in the game that are just way too pathetic in PvP they're as good as useless Luckily, we can fix this by modifying our spells. If you don't know this part already, you'll just download the .ct file listed in the description, open that in Cheat Engine, click this, find Dark Souls in the process list, click open, and click open here, and now we're ready to get started. For our purposes here, initially I'm going to be messing with Crystal Soul Spear. You're going to collapse helpers, highlighted, last spell highlighted, Highlighting means you simply put the selector over the spell. Now we have values coming up everywhere. Slots used, that's the attunement requirement. Required intelligence, 48. Nah. One of the coolest things you can do with spells is actually one of the easiest. Modifying the cast animation. Over here you can put anything between 0 and 50. Those are all the cast animations in the game. Some cast animations will break the spell, but usually that's not the case. So now we're going to have to modify the bullet itself. For the time being, we're done with last spell highlighted. Let's collapse bullet effect goods, etc. Let's collapse this. Check this box. Click memory view. Hit control G on your keyboard. Type the word bullet. Right click here and bring up the bullet finder. While watching the box, shoot your spell. And clearly, since there's only one here, this is the spell we just shot. Some spells will have multiple bullets, more on that later. Most projectile spells only have a single bullet. So we're going to Control C to copy this. Put it in the bullet helper, like so. And there's a lot here. Let's focus on the good stuff. Life. This is seconds, 1.5 seconds. This determines when the bullet dissipates. We want to be able to snipe people from vast distances. So we'll bump that up to 10. The next important thing is hit radius. This is going to allow you to make lots of crappy spells more viable. So many spells have such a ridiculously small hitbox. Putting one here is about one foot like in the game world from the perspective of your player character so to keep things not too out of hand let's try two up from 0 0.2 to two this means if your bullet passes within about two feet of your target it's going to go to him and hit him however once you've modified your hit radius you will now notice it's hitting the ground so anytime we mess with hit radius we also want to go down to flags, is penetrate map, and change this 0 to a 1. And yes, this does mean you can shoot people through walls now. So we've made our projectile last a lot longer, go much farther, and have a larger hitbox. Now of course all we need to do is amplify the damage. This does not work for all spells, but in the case of the soul arrows and lots of projectile spells, this does work. You simply go to this value here, num shoot, and multiply it as desired. This will be three crystal soul spears in one. This will be two, etc. It looks the same. They're simultaneous, but technically there's two spears here and they will take the damage from both of those spears. Let's now go to special effect IDs and collapse this. In any of these 0 through 4 you can place an effect ID. You will find all the effect IDs in the game in the master doc file linked in the description. Effects are basically anything you can imagine. You can put visual effects on people, you can 
buff their weapon by hitting them, you can heal, you can do more damage, you can apply statuses. So if your bullet successfully hits its target, the game says, okay, is there anything here? There's not, so we don't do anything. If there is an effect ID here, that effect ID is run on the character you have shot. Which brings us back to damage. On spells where modifying numb shoot does not alter your damage, there are effect IDs that add damage. I like this one right here if you want to do a pretty massive chunk of damage. This one right here is much more reasonable, but is still enough to make any spell more viable. And this one right here is a modest amount of damage in drain form instead of all at once. Yes, you can stack effects. The order does not matter. And in the effect IDs tab of the master doc file, here is a list of all of the effects in the game, or close to it. As you can see, it's a massive list. Not all of this will work, some of it is area dependent. But here is where you can find all your buffs, all your visual effects that you want to add to the special effect ID values in Bullet Helper. And if you take a look right here, special effect ID for shooter, the same sort of effect IDs go in this variable. But in this case, this runs the effect on your character as soon as you shoot the bullet. So now that we've learned the basics, let's try to mod a spell that is not so much a projectile type spell. We'll mess with Divine Pillars of Light. So with our bullet finder once again opened, and we see there's four bullets here. Luckily however, one of these is a sort of governing bullet, so we don't actually have to mess with all of these. To find the governing bullet, Oftentimes it would be the one where is penetrate map is already set to one automatically and typically the governing bullet will also have a hit radius of more than say 0.5 anything much tinier than that and you probably got the wrong bullet but this is the one let's change that hit radius and because is penetrate map is already set to one naturally for this spell we don't need to change it where is our fire keeper And if we were to modify life, all these guys here die in one hit anyway, but you could continually toss people in the air for this amount of seconds. A fantastic thing to pair with arrows, bolts, and projectile spells is Mega Lock-On. Go to Hero, Player Game Data, check these two boxes, and increase these values. I've already done so. Now you can lock on to anyone no matter where they are on the map so long as you can kind of see them. And the lock on will not go away just because they go behind a structure. Cool. And lastly, there's not a whole lot of applications for this, but I'll show you one. This uh, value here, follow type. If you change it to one, your bullet will stick to your body and will remain there for whatever you have life set to. Although this is not visible to other people, it does have its uses. So the explanation for this is that my force spell is actually inside my body. Come at me, bro. Oh my. Now you know the basics to make any spell viable in PvP. If you want to do more spectacular things with spells, such as kind of combining spells and creating crazy spells that aren't exactly in the game per se, see my video modding spells using behavior IDs. Happy hacking, everyone. Happy Dark Sauce. And as always, praise that stinking pig. <laughs>